First at Five, from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Welcome to WUFT News First at Five. I'm Landry Ballatin. And I'm Malia Lydon. Thanks for joining us. A man is in custody after holding a pizza shop employee hostage in the Orlando area. We're about to show you some video taken from the scene where shots rang out during the standoff. I'm warning you, it does get loud. Police say the situation started when 49-year-old Neil Pittard took a Hungry Howie's employee hostage around 5 p.m. yesterday. During the incident, Pittard's wife called 911 concerned about suicidal threats he made. The standoff with the Seminole County SWAT team lasted eight hours. It ended in smoking gunshots as law enforcement stunned and captured the suspect. Pittard is charged with false imprisonment and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. In the continuing conflict with Disney World, Governor Ron DeSantis says the ongoing special session will consider sunsetting Disney's self-control of planning and development. The governor made the announcement while signing an education bill this morning in the villages. Disney has come out against the new education law, which critics call Don't Say Gay. The new Florida law bans lessons about sexual orientation and gender identity before fourth grade and requires any lessons in higher grades to be age appropriate. And so, yes, they will be considering the congressional map, but they also will be considering termination of all special districts that were enacted in Florida prior to 1968, and that includes the Reedy Creek Improvement District. Representative Randy Fine says his bill should remind Disney they're a guest in Florida. In 1967, Disney was granted its own Reedy Creek District to plan and develop without needing approval from Orange and Osceola counties. The 1968 red line would impact four other districts, including one in our viewing area, the Bradford County Development Authority. The bill calls for the districts to dissolve next June unless there are votes to reestablish each one. The farming industry makes up a large population of Alachua County's employment, as over 23% of workers in the county are farmers. But not all of these farms are in rural areas. WUFT's Kendall Brandt visited a farm in downtown Gainesville's very own backyard to see how they support their community. Yeah. Root by root, a farmer harvests each vegetable. It is more than just pulling crops from the ground for Anna Considine. I'm obsessed with the connection with community and providing food for folks. She's one of the daily operators at Siembra Farms. The farm is located two miles from downtown Gainesville. It feeds upwards of 400 families per week. Siembra sells over 200 bunches of greens and 200 pounds of root vegetables weekly. One of Siembra's main goals is to increase accessibility to fresh produce for disadvantaged members of the community. Siembra vends at farmers markets to reach that goal. Our markets are set up so that we're um, selling to the most diverse set of folks in Alachua that we can. On over 10 acres of land, Siembra Farms grows 40 different types of organic produce from the ground up. Part of our mission is to increase accessibility. So we try to, we put in all that work to go to the different markets so that we can do that. Considine also works to raise awareness for government assistance that supplements the farm's goal of accessibility. The SNAP program is um, a government program at the farmer's markets where you can get your food stamps doubled and it's a great relationship for the farmers and consumers. You're able to support local and get nice fresh veggies and fruits. Community engagement is not the only unique quality of this farm. Siembra Farms is managed and staffed almost completely by women. Our farm is mainly operated and run by um, females, and me and Jen Speedy are the two main daily operators of the farm, and most of our employees are also women. Crop by crop, Anna supports her female co-workers and the community. Reporting from Siember Farms, Kendall Brandt, WUFT News. Siember Farms, Fins at Gainesville Market, Alachua County, Haley and Grove Street Farmers Markets. Malia, I wonder if today is a good day for farming. You know who would know? Mary, WUFT's Mariana Larson. Mariana, what should we expect for the rest of today and this week? 
Well, ladies, I don't know much about farming, but I do know about weather, and today has been an interesting day in the weather world. If you woke up early this morning, you probably felt how cold it was, and although later in the day temperatures warmed up, it's still pretty windy out there right now. In Gainesville, we're feeling winds of 11 miles an hour, and across the region, we're seeing similar patterns. But nonetheless, it is still looking beautiful outside right now. If we take a look at our campus cam, you can see just how gorgeous it is looking with those bright blue skies and not a cloud in the sky right now. And here in Gainesville, it is feeling like 73. Now, taking a look at tonight though, as the sun goes down, we are going to see temperatures drop into the 40s. Back to the desk. Thanks, Mariana. The Florida Gators men's basketball team has an assistant that keeps them feeling and looking fresh. WUFT Sophia Mangoti brings us the story from the barber's chair. Take a seat in Ju Ray Quo's foldable green chair. A barber cape drapes over your shoulders, the electric clippers power on, and meaningful conversations get combed into the hour long cut. And one thing I started to realize was that, you know, the haircut would fade, but the conversation is what will last forever. Six years ago, Quo started cutting hair. Now, he's the unofficial barber of the Florida Gators men's basketball team. I think there's like 15 guys on the roster, and so some, some of them get, get cuts like maybe like once every like one and a half weeks, and one every two weeks. Quo is an applied physiology and kinesiology master's student at the University of Florida. He serves as a graduate assistant for the team. Oh, he's a good dude. He, uh, uh, we Spent a lot of time with him at practice and stuff. Uh, he connected with a lot of people through the university. He helps coach Todd Golden with practice, advises athletes on lifting techniques, and runs drills. Jure, he does a lot. Like He's not just cutting hair. He's you know, being a manager last year. He's kind of uh, doing part-time with the uh, strength conditioning part with us, but he's a man of many talents. One of those talents is connecting with the players on and off the court. As an athlete, you probably want to just get away from your sport sometime. And, you know, Drew Ray, he understands that. And so, um, you know, just getting a cut and just having that talk, like a barbershop like situation, but, you know, just one on one, uh, it's kind of cool to have. We talk about everything, really. Like, we talk about basketball, we talk about life, we talk about a lot of mindset stuff because he's a hardworking guy. We try to pick his brain a little bit. Quo also extends his services to those in need. Inspired by celebrity barber Vic Blends, he gives free haircuts to people experiencing homelessness. Anybody else who needs a cut, like that are in need, I'm like yo man, don't even worry about it, man. Like I got you. So I wanted to be able to provide that service. And looking at Vic Blends, you know he's done a lot of a lot of good things in the community. So you know definitely an inspiration for sure. The current basketball players expect Quo to rise to fame for his cuts. I just know Jewelry is going to be a, a big name in a couple of years. Quo reflects on the power of each haircut. One of the best things I've ever had or experienced in the barbershop was that feeling that you get once the haircut is done and they give you the mirror. And, you know, I feel like that's the, one of the most rewarding feelings that you can ever give to somebody because when you see joy, when you see smiles on people's face, I feel like that's what makes the world to, to most people. That's what, makes, that's what makes my day. Looking forward to the next person he can hand a mirror to. Sophia Mingoti, WUFT News. If you'd like to see more of Quo's haircuts, visit his Instagram page, Quo Cuts. Also at UF, in full disclosure, at the Journalism College where WUFT News is based, registration is now open for a summer program for high school students. The Summer Media Institute, or SMI, is a hands-on workshop that lasts five nights and six days in June. You can learn more online by going to Eventbrite and searching for SMI 22. Landry, I remember last year when we had to wear a mask to get a haircut. I remember that too, Malia, and now masks are coming off in public spaces everywhere. Coming up on WUFT News First at 5, we'll tell you where masks are coming off. Stay tuned. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Welcome back to WUFT First at Five. We have a lot of health-related news today as we look under the microscope. 
The fallout is beginning after a federal judge in Florida struck down the CDC travel mask mandate. The ruling came less than a week after the CDC extended it for another two weeks. CNN's Pete Muntean reports. A surprise court ruling has ended the transportation mask mandate for now. U.S. District Judge Catherine Kimball Mazel said she does not need another hearing to decide that the rule exceeds the CDC's authority. Mazel's Monday ruling first threw the travel industry into disarray, but now a growing list of airlines confirm masks are no longer required on their flights. The federal government began requiring masks on planes, trains, buses, boats, and in terminals starting in February 2021. Last week, the Biden administration once again extended the rule to expire on May 3rd, citing a rise in coronavirus cases. But only hours prior, the airline industry's top lobby wrote the White House to say the mandate must end. We've done it for two years, and it's time to uh, to move beyond that and, and now make that the responsibility of individuals. Face coverings are required at all times. Judge Mazel was appointed to federal district court in 2020 by then-President Donald Trump. In her ruling, Mazel said travelers have been, quote, forcibly removed from their airplane seats, denied boarding at the bus steps, and turned away at the train station doors, likening it to, quote, detention and quarantine. Immediately following her decision, passengers at airports across the country continued wearing masks, unaware of the ruling. Hopefully it ends. I'll always wear my mask. I lost my grandmother to COVID a year ago, and so I'm very particular about the mask. Speaking of public transportation, Landry, Uber has made some changes. Uber is lifting its mask mandate for riders and drivers. The company was able to make the move with the CDC order lifted. Additionally, passengers can now sit in the front. The rideshare app Lyft has also changed its policy. That's quite a change, Malia. Let's take a look at how some major cities are responding to the new mask changes. Atlanta's MARTA will stop enforcing its mask mandate. In the capital of Texas, riders of CAP Metro are no longer required to wear masks. And in the nation's capital, Metro riders and employees are no longer required to mask up. But some cities like New York, Seattle, and Portland are maintaining their mask requirements. Thanks, Landry. And for our last bit of health news, the CDC is launching a new center to help predict emerging health threats. They will use data to guide future decisions about broad public health needs, such as developing vaccines. The CDC will also help individuals decide whether it's safe for them to go into public spaces. Since August, the center's research team has focused on the severity of the Omicron variant. The launch is part of a broad review of CDC systems. It is. It is beautiful outside right now, but we did have a cold start to this morning. Is it going to warm up later in the week? Stay tuned after the break and I'm going to let you know. You're watching WUFT TV News. This one goes out to all my sports fans out there. It's game day, and if you're planning on attending the game tonight, well, I have the forecast for you. Um, around the first pitch, around 6 p.m., we're going to see temperatures in the 70s, but as the sun starts to go down, that temperature is going to drop, and by the end of the game, we're going to see temperatures around the 60s. So if you're planning on attending, I would recommend to bring a jacket because it is going to be quite windy as well. Taking a look at our lows for tonight and tomorrow morning, it's still going to be pretty cold, just like what we saw today. In Gainesville, it's about 47, Ocala's 48, and Bronson is 49, so keep those blankets handy. And going into this week, let's take a look at what it's going to look like. We are going to see those chilly temperatures tonight, but as the week goes on, we are going to gradually start getting those summer temperatures back, and it's going to warm up just a little. Let's see what that looks like going into the hour by hour for tomorrow. We are going to see that it's just a little bit warmer than it was today. We're going to have highs in the 78s and it's going to be mostly sunny. We're going to have a cool start to the morning, but overall it's going to be pretty great weather just like it was today. 
And looking at the highs for tomorrow, as I said, Ocala is going to be in the 81s, Bronson is going to be 80, and High Springs is going to be 81. Now looking at Thursday, we are going to see temperatures gradually increase just by a degree or two. Gainesville is going to have a high of 80, Stark is going to have a high of 79, and Lake City is going to have a high of 80. Now, as we are seeing this temperature rise, we do have a ridge coming into our area and this ridge is going to bring those warmer temperatures that we're seeing. It's going to push away the high pressure that we're currently experiencing and that's giving us this cold weather and we're going to start to get that warm weather that we're used to back into our atmosphere. Now taking a look at our six day forecast. As I mentioned, it's going to gradually increase and we're going to see mostly sunny skies. Back to the news desk. Gators baseball is back in action for an in-state matchup tonight against Stetson. WUFT Taylor Burr says the Gators look to stay hot against the hat Hatters. Don't go away, sports is next. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome to sports. I'm Taylor Burr. Let's start on the diamond. The Florida baseball team has a busy couple of days. Tonight, UF will play Stetson in Gainesville. Coming off a tough weekend with a series loss against Vanderbilt, the Gators are no longer ranked with a 22 and 14 record. Stetson also came off a tough weekend, losing their weekend series to Jacksonville. The Hatters now have a record of 18 and 17, riding a two-game losing streak. After tonight's game, it will be a quick turnaround as it's back to SEC play. The Gators are 6 and 9 in conference play, and things won't get any easier this weekend as one of the best teams in the country, Tennessee, comes to town. Moving to softball, the Gators play USF tomorrow night. The ladies are coming off a strong series sweep over Ole Miss. Florida now has a 34-9 record. In the Gators' last matchup against USF, Florida won 12-0. The Gators have absolutely owned the Bulls, winning 24 in a row, looking to make it 25 tomorrow. The game starts at 6. Moving to the courts, the women's tennis team hosts the SEC Women's Tennis Championship. The tournament starts tomorrow and lasts till Sunday. The fourth-ranked Florida team is a double bye and is set to play Friday feel pretty good about our level of play. I feel good about our doubles. And so perhaps this is the best we've played all year, which uh, comes, um, you know, at a good time when we actually get to host the tournament here at home again. Moving to Major League Baseball, the Rays played the Cubs tonight for their second game of a three-game series. Last night, the Rays fell 4-2 to two against Chicago and currently have a 5-6 and six record. In tonight's game, Josh Fleming will start for the Rays as a left-hander will look to lead Tampa to the victory in Game 2. Moving to the hardwood, the playoffs continue for the Heat. Tonight, Game 2 against the Hawks. Saturday, Miami destroyed Atlanta by 32 points. Jimmy Butler led the way for the Heat with 21. Miami had the best record in the East during the regular season and will enjoy home court advantage throughout the Eastern Conference playoffs. The game starts at 7.30 tonight. Lastly on the ice, the Lightning face off against the Red Wings tonight. Tampa sits third in the Atlantic Division, coming off a 7-4 win over Winnipeg on Saturday. Tampa, the two-time defending Stanley Cup championships, will start their title defense next week in the playoffs. Thanks, Taylor. Vampires beware, today is National Garlic Day. April 19th is National Garlic Day, but today isn't just a day to celebrate the plant's taste, it's also to create awareness of garlic as a natural medicine. Garlic is often used for cold remedies, and it has links to reducing blood pressure and cholesterol as well. Before we go, one last check on the weather. Tomorrow we are going to have another cold start to our morning with temperatures reaching the 40s in some places. Burr. But anyways, as the day goes on, it is going to get a little warmer. And the graphic just disappeared, but just know that temperatures are going to reach the highs of the upper 70s and 80s throughout the week. Thanks, Mariana. And thanks for watching. Your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Since we're graduating, this will be our last show as anchors. So for the last time, I'm Landry Ballatin.
It's been an amazing experience here at WUFT News. For the last time, I'm Malia Leiden. Have a great night.